Warning, this video may contain content that may not be suitable for children or anyone else that is easily offended. Strong language, graphic content, nudity, bad jokes, and a possible idiot, aka myself, may be featured in the following clip. Viewer discretion is advised. You're not responsible for any damage that you receive watching this video. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's Zims, and welcome to three horrifying cases of ghost and demons. This video is by BuzzFeed Unsolved, so make sure you guys swoop down to the description box, click on the link, and watch the video in entirety, because I'm going to be pausing and stopping and talking through the whole thing. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me for a lot of these, so I'm going to try to do my best. This video probably won't come out for another two or three days, but while I'm recording this, just know I recorded it on July 4th, but I'm going to put another video on top of this one. It's probably going to be Mr. Nightmare, but for now, let's get it. Ah! It's me, Buzzfeed and Shane Solve, and Ryan. Cases and visit some of the most haunted, horrifying places in the world in an effort to answer some questions that I've always been curious about. Are ghosts and demons real? Facts, and if yes. they are real, can they manipulate, yes. harm, and perhaps even kill the living? Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we're in San Jose, California at Sacred Heart Church to talk to Father Gary Thomas in 2005. Father Thomas was sent all the way to Rome to the Vatican to learn <coughs> the rite of exorcism. A movie was actually based on his experiences in Rome starring Anthony Hopkins. Basically, this dude's the real deal. We're gonna be oh. happy that we talked to him and had his guidance when we go to some of these places. What? Yeah, I think so. We better we better stock up on some knowledge sure, here, sure. otherwise we're gonna get murdered by ghosts. Thanks. Clap. You're gonna be thankful that we're meeting this guy later, I promise you. I promise Aww. you, you will regret that statement. Damn, man, I haven't been to church since 19-something. I was kidding, bro. I haven't been to church since I was like 8, 10, maybe? Dang, that was crazy, uh, First bro. off, thank you for meeting with us, Father Thomas. Sure. Sorry. I read a lot about you. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, we... <laughs> How many exorcisms have you performed over your career? Formal exorcisms, I've probably performed 50 to 75 in 10 years. What is the difference between a ghost and a demon? A ghost would refer to a disembodied human soul. Mm -hmm. A demon is a preternatural, angelic creature that rebelled against God. It's not human. No, it's not. Their life form is dying. They've mm -hmm. been dying since the moment they rebelled. And so they are attracted to human beings for two reasons. One, because they are parasitic and they, and they feed off our life form. But secondly, oh. their goal is to take as many of us to hell with them as possible because they already know they've lost. I'm not trying to evangelize oh, you. I, I, oh, no, no, I just no. got a shiver down no. my spine. <laughs> so can a ghost and a demon both possess or maybe influence the living? Yes. Hmm. And I've had those cases. Where are these homes you're going into? One of them is nearby here, the Winchester Mystery House. Oh, Essentially, it's a haunted that. mansion. And then the next one is a haunted doll island in Mexico City. Never heard of that. The last place is perhaps the scariest. It's a house infested with a demon. Do you have any advice for us going into some of these places where we may come into contact with not so nice spirits? Are we still on camera? Yeah. Okay. If these places you're going claim to have spiritual attachments, I would do nothing to invite them into any kind of conversation. I would do nothing Shame. to invite them to somehow show themselves or taunt them in any way. Shame. You don't want to create a tie with them. So treat it like a fine art museum. I would. Would it be possible for you to perhaps bless some water for something for me to carry? Yes. Do you have something? It's, it's literally just a water bottle. That's but. fine. I can bless it. He can bless my soul, boy, because that water bottle ain't going to be able to do enough damage for me being on that island in the house or in the Winchester mansion. I don't know what he's talking about, bro. He said, are we still on camera? Bruh, that should give you a telltale sign to get the hell out of there, bruh. He was about to be like, hell no. Nah. Ooh, sorry, dude. Bruh, he was about to, he was about to blow his whole cover, bruh. His whole, all that pastor stuff was about to go right out the window, bruh. Red flags all around the church, bruh. He, man. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of See? the Holy Spirit. Told you. In your kindness, hear our prayers, and pour down the blessing into this element, so that the health obtained by calling upon your holy name may be made secure against all attack, through Christ our Lord. That's Niagara water. Thank you. Thank you uh, for sure. sitting down. That's that Dollar Tree water. This is helpful. Fascinating. This yeah, was, it was super helpful okay. and I feel a lot better about Good. what's about Good. to happen. Good. Like I just feel so comforted right now. Hell and nah, bro. where we're about to go, it's gonna be <laughs> ex the exact opposite. So Yeah. You should have took some twisted yeah, iced tea. That at all? No. <laughs> Why are we doing this? I don't know if we got this on camera, but he told me. Uh, do not be afraid. I, I mean, I won't lie, I am very scared, but... Okay. Um, do not be afraid. If anything happens, just mm -hmm. do not be afraid. That's all you have to keep repeating. He said it a bunch of times in the Bible. Jesus said chill. <laughs> Jesus said chill. Bruh, yeah, for sure. real, that's how they get you. All right, right now we're on our way to the Winchester. Just met Ooh, with the pastor. Nice. Got our holy water, 
got our tips, our demon tips. Tip of what? Bro, tell them to put me on this show, bruh. Yeah, I need to go over there and tell them, like, hey, put Zim's on this show, bruh. The, the, the ratings is about to be even more higher. Uh, this looks like Disneyland. I wouldn't be surprised if they got cotton candy in there. Yuck it up, man. Yuck it up. You're really enjoying this, but when the lights go off, this may be a little different. Facts. This is beautiful. Mickey Mouse could be here like, oh, come on in, boys. <laughs> Oh, hell no, Shannon. You are full of shit if you do not feel strange right now. No, I don't. Yeah, shame built Such different. A fucking shyster, dude. <laughs> the hair on the back of my neck is standing up. This is crazy. Right now, we're sitting in the bedroom of Sarah Winchester, who built this mansion as the result of a terrible tragedy. Sarah actually passed away in this very room, in that bed right there. Hell of a bed. Oh, hell no. I, I assure you, in like half of the places you've been, people have died there. People have probably died in the Chipotle we just ate at. That's true. Let's just get into it. Okay. Let's Sarah Pardeen was born around 1840 to a very wealthy family. In 1862, in her early 20s, Sarah married William Winchester, whose father, Oliver Winchester, founded the company that made the Winchester Repeating Rifle, a rifle that will become oh. the ultimate weapon of death in the wars to come. In 1866, Sarah and William had their first child, Annie Pardee Winchester, but unfortunately, their daughter would die from a disease called Marasmus, only a month and a half later. My in 1980, asses. William's father, Oliver Winchester, passed away, leaving the company to William. But William contracted tuberculosis shortly after and tragically died yeah. in March 1881, only a few months after his father. Jesus. Oh. That was the most disingenuous. No, no, that, <laughs> I don't was, know what... that was real. Okay. Now that we laid down the facts, <laughs> let's get into the legend. William's death was almost unbearable for Sarah, who, according to legend, reached out to spiritualists and mediums in Boston to help her understand the deaths of her daughter and husband. Many believe that it was one fateful visit to a particular medium that would change her life. The medium told Sarah that her family was being haunted by the spirits of those killed by the Winchester rifle, oh. and that her family members' deaths were retribution. The medium said Sarah's family was cursed, and that the only way to lift the curse was to move west and build a house, Cap. and never stop building. <laughs> Cap, bruh. Well, I think I know the end of this story. <laughs> she stopped building. The good spirits would guide her on what to build. And if she continued building, she could live forever. But if she stopped, the evil spirits that were victims of the Winchester rifle would haunt Sarah forever. If you can live forever, great. But if yeah. you have to continue to build a house that entire time, unless you're having fun, which I don't think she well, was. Well, she wasn't I'm like not. putting on a hard hat and like physically making the house herself. She was delegating. That's why she didn't live forever, because she found a loophole. I won't argue that oh, your yeah. logic is flawed. That I is just true. It because it's detrimental to my argument. It's fine. That is true, though, because they said she has to continue building, but she found a loophole and said they will have to build it at the same time. That's a lot of money, man. I know it's a rich, but you just have to kill me, bro. I'm not Bob the Builder, bro. I'm not home improvements, bro. You're just going to have to clap me, bro. I'm not about to just keep building shit just to keep whoever. You should have you had the thing on you, bro. You know, my father got killed by the Winchester with the buy one. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Needless to say, Sarah followed the medium's advice and Lackin. moved west where she built an eight-room farmhouse in San Jose. It is estimated that 500 to 600 rooms were built, but due to her constant remodeling, only 161 rooms remain, one of which was newly discovered in October 2016. You think the ghost just checked in every, like, three, <laughs> three to five years? Check like, time we cards. should see if she's still building that, otherwise we gotta kill her. <laughs> <laughs> However, what makes this mansion famous isn't the size or amount of rooms. It's the odd and peculiar nature in which they were constructed. It was built this way in an effort to confuse the evil spirits that were haunting and following Sarah. The walkways are narrow and twist and turn around the mansion. There are stairs that lead to the ceiling and doors that open into brick walls. And in one instance, a door known as the door to nowhere that opens to a sheer drop on the outside of the house from the second floor. What the hell? I can't imagine a ghost would get foiled into falling into these bushes down here, but the no. thought is nice. Bruh, can you imagine? Hey, where's the restroom? Yeah, it's over there down to the left. All right, thanks. Ah! All right, now that we've established the legend, let's discuss some possible alternate theories as to why Sarah built the way she did. Oh. One theory that explains some unfinished aspects of the house is Sarah's arthritis that affected her late in her life. One area called the Hall of Fires is a hallway lined with fireplaces. It's purpose to perhaps aid Sarah's arthritis. This could provide a reason for an unfinished staircase as she possibly saw no reason to complete it. But I struggle to see how this explains a door to nowhere. 
Facts. Nobody is building a house like this because they have arthritis. It's, I yeah, say that's, that's true. Not this a, is, that this is, is a theory. A, I'm just stating the No theories. one says, this, oh, my knuckles feel a little <laughs> funny. I'm going to build a house with 500 I, rooms. I hear you, man. I hear. I agree with you. I'm just saying I, this is a theory that people believe, and I'm relating nah, the theory. I, I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed. I mean, you know what the doctor says. Nothing's better for arthritis than a two-story drop to the floor down below, right? <laughs> right, yeah. Another theory is that Sarah needed a change of scenery and continued mm. to build to keep her mind occupied and off her grief. No. No, that. No. Nah. Yes. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe she just wasn't very good at planning. Yeah. And she did that for her entire life. Yeah, you? for her entire life. But she's but okay. at making designs. Hey, okay, we all need hobbies. Another theory comes from historian Mary Jo Ignafo, okay, let's who see. investigated Sarah Winchester. Ignafo believes Sarah was devoted to building because she was interested in architecture. Ignafo reports that Sarah's own letters reveal that construction stopped at months at a time, despite what legend would suggest. Ignafo also explains the unfinished state of rooms as the result of an earthquake in 1906 that caused damage to the house, okay. theorizing that Sarah simply shut down that area of the house rather than attempting repairs. And finally, she also could not find evidence that Sarah communicated with spirits. I'll go with theory three. I will say, I can't imagine three, communicating three. with spirits produces any kind of receipt. No, yeah. nobody has evidence. Yeah, that's okay, fast. I'm just saying I call bullshit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I agree with your calling of bullshit. Good, I, I'm glad yeah. we agree on something. Yeah, yeah we all three do, it. yeah. Okay, we've we done it, we've done it. <laughs> Let's go home now. But enough conjecture. Let's look at some of the spiritually active areas of this very unsettling house. Oh, this room looks like a nightmare. That's fun. There's a few rooms in this house that strike me as, okay, this is ghost town. Where? This could be it. Let me see. Oh yeah, definitely, 100% uh, creepy. 100% creepy in this house right now. What the hell? She got like three windows that you can't even see. The way the shadows play with your, with your mind. Well, I, I didn't see something, I heard something. I heard a noise right up there. It came the, from up there. The ghost is probably still oh, building. That's that's also a concern, I mean, but... Ah, oh, bets are no. <sighs> this fucking guy. One room that is particularly important is a room called the Blue Room, or as some know it, the Seance Room, a room where Sarah would allegedly communicate with the good spirits on a nightly basis for building guidance. Hell no. The room has three entrances and one door that is like a trap door dropping into the kitchen down below. And not surprisingly, this is one of the most active rooms in the house, with reports of organ music being heard, cold spots, and people experiencing dizziness. What is this thing doing? Man, that's a noise. shortcut to breakfast. I just took out a brand new battery. I just took off the plastic from it and put it in, it's and it's dying all the way to zero. This is highly unusual. <laughs> I've never seen it do this before. <laughs> I'm just gonna ignore you and fix the issue. Yeah. I'm gonna lock myself in here with a ghost. Yo, Shane as well, bro. I turned my flashlight off. This is horrifying. I bet Ryan wouldn't do this. Oh, fucking come on, man. Oh, hell. What is that? Is it a closet? God damn it. I knew he was going to do that. It still scared me. Fuck you. <laughs> the house as a whole has reports of hearing people breathing, footsteps, hearing screws being unscrewed and dropped to the floor, full body apparitions of servants, mm -mm. with the most famous spirit being Sarah herself, often seen in her bedroom. Oh, hell Naturally, no. one of the creepiest and most active places in the entire house is the basement. <laughs> where guests and workers often claim to see the ghost of a caretaker named Clyde pushing a wheelbarrow. Bruh, stop. Oh, jeez, I cannot get a break, bruh. She's jump scared. Jeez. Why I'm walking in here by my fucking self is beyond me. It's beyond me. Oh, fuck, I'm so scared. Bruh. Ah, uh, man. Better get that water bottle ready. All right, apparently this is where a recurring ghost is seen. Basement, bruh. I don't like how. Oh, oh, my God. What are you? Hey, man, calm down. Oh, my God. Shit, Shane. My mic went out, and then I was looking for you. He's crouching in here like some kind of cave creature. And then I, all I did was I went. I was just oh, yeah. coming so to say hello to you. You're looking for me while grunting like a zombie. Uh, you almost scared me to death. I'm never going to forgive you for that. Oh. I'll be fucking proud of yourself. I would have died, bro. They would have to pick me up. You saw me. I, I, bullshit, you thought I saw you. I really didn't think it was gonna work. Sarah to... seemingly lived a life of solitude. She reportedly wore a dark veil at almost all times to mask her appearance. And in 1922, Sarah died at the age of 83. In the end, the questions remain. Was this just the result of a woman filled with grief? Or were the evil spirits that haunted Sarah Winchester so horrifying that they drove her and perhaps possessed her to build until her death? She probably believed uh, yeah. that spirits did say this to her. Whether or not that's a thing that actually happened, I, you know. So you're saying 
it's more along the lines of grief. I think it's more on lines of mental. Okay, my opinion is I feel like she did have grief, but you know when people die, some people take it differently. Some people lose their mind. Like some people can lose their parents or some, their loved one. And then after that, they are never the same again. They're like weird. They like do stuff they never done before. I think she was she was mental. Like, cause you just don't, just don't build doors that lead down into the kitchen or you don't build a door that just leads to the outside. Like, what are you trying to do? Or like, what? Like, why are you doing that? I don't know. I feel like she had like, like bipolar or schizophrenia or something like that. But that's just me. Let me know down in the comment section what y'all think. I don't feel like it was any of them. I feel like she had a mental issue of losing so many family members over time that she just snapped. That yeah. produced, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I mean, she went through ghosts. some some pretty harrowing stuff. Yeah. Let me just ask you straight out. Do you believe ghosts are real right now? Yes. <laughs> uh, no. Why do you not believe ghosts are real? Uh, I've never seen one. Okay, I mean, there's a lot of things that you can't I haven't see seen them. are real, I feel like. What mm. can't I see? You can't see gravity, that's real. Yeah, I can drop okay. an apple. Oh, damn, he got him. <laughs> I guess you'll just you'll just never believe me until Look, something happens. Hey, this whole entire <clears throat> trip, I'm I'm ready. Hey, ghosts, don't t tussle my hair. I would do nothing to invite them to somehow show themselves, I told or it. taunt them in any way. Shame. Uh, give me give me a little purple nurple or something. <laughs> Let's have some fun. <laughs> Here I am. Regardless, the real reason behind the creation of the Winchester Mystery House will remain unsolved. I already saw it. I'm so it. proud of her for doing this. Schizophrenia. By the way. It's really something. You're the worst. I no, I genuinely, like, this is neat. If I have to spend one more moment sitting in this chair, looking at that silly face, I think I'm <laughs> in myself. <laughs> All right, we're getting out of here. Okay. Yeah, I would love to go yeah, to a place with him too, bro. I feel safe. Out, uh, He'll make me laugh. San Jose. Onward. Onward to uh, Mexico. Yeah, why not? Shh. Yeah. It's going to be a horrible place until tomorrow, so I think we're going to enjoy the city a little bit tonight. Ooh. Damn, he got the limon. Oh my. Oh, my. All right. That was good, bro. I love me some Mexican food. I don't know if this is a sign, but mm -hmm. I'm in the bathroom at this bar, and this mirror literally has blood dripping from it. But I'm going to order another beer, so we're good. Oh, bro. Mexico looks so much fun, man. We're getting a drink in Mexico, and we ran into the Grimm from Harry Potter. <laughs> this is crazy. Shame we're on our way to a nightmare. That You're made me hungry, bro. I'm on my way to a nice <laughs> retreat. Okay, we'll see. Oh, they got the churros in the street. Oh, bro, what? Oh, right now man. We're, uh, <laughs> we're being carted over I'm fat, bro. to the dock. We were just sort of put on here. I don't know. I guess that's how easy it is to trick us. <laughs> yeah. hey, get on, get on, get on. Okay. Oh, fuck. Hey, that was almost a two bike trolley collision right there. So, uh, I'm actually not quite sure where we are right now. No, it's fine. You just get it. You just yes. go with the flow, Ryan. That's what people use to stay on their way to their death. Thanks. Oh, they got so we survived a little trolley over here. We're joined by Pepe from Busby, Mexico. Hola amigos. Oh. Right now we're on the outskirts of Mexico City in the ancient Aztec canals of Xochimilco, heading toward- I didn't know they had a BuzzFeed Mexico. Is it like all over the world? Like BuzzFeed California, BuzzFeed like uh, G Germany and all that? Is that like a thing? Let me know down in the comment section. Also, this is too damn far away, bro. If you had to take a plane, you had to take a little a chauffeur, kind of like, I don't know what they call it, chauffeur dude, and then you gotta take a boat, bro. That's too much shit that you gotta get back to if you have to run, bro. Hell to the naw, bro. You better have a helicopter on standby waiting in a, a certain location that I can get to, bro. Give me a flare gun, some candles, bro. Something, bro. Hell to the no. Our next location, the terror terrifying island of the dolls. Oh my goodness. This is a mistake. Oh yeah, there's also a thunderstorm about to roll in, so that's fine. Yeah. But he looks fine, look at the kid's fight. <laughs> and now I feel like a big weenie. Yeah, he's chilling, bro. You are a big weenie. Uh oh. All right, guys, if you this is to be crazy, kind It's been said that people don't like these canals due to the bad energy. Those who navigate the canals claim the dolls lure them to the island. One Trahanera operator claims that he was even possessed for multiple days when approaching the island. Mm -hmm. Possessed for multiple days? Like, this is the beginning what? of a horror movie right now. Facts. The Conjuring, We're the here. dolls made me do it. And it's raining. Lovely. Shall we? Yep. You go. You will go first. Oh, I go first? <laughs> okay. Yo, Shane is built different, bro. It's an I ominous cloud in the sky. Oh, it's man, brilliant. bro. I have a bad history with dolls. Yeah, very atmospheric thunder. Well, this seems all horrible and awful in general. And this is so... Wow. 
<laughs> Someone <laughs> committed their life to this. Oh, there's spiders everywhere. Oh, that's nice. no. Uh, see, I'm more concerned about the spiders than the ghosts. Is that right? Yeah. I'm terrified of spiders, bro. Spiders and ghosts are like this my worst nightmare. Not as pleasant at night. So, Pepe, you're telling me you don't come here every weekend? Yeah, where is Pepe? No, I, this is not one of my favorite places. <laughs> <laughs> In the 1950s in Mexico, Don Julian Santana Barrera was persecuted for being overzealous in his religious beliefs. After that, for reasons unclear, Julian abandoned his wife and child and moved to the island we're at tonight in the Xochimilco canals in the outskirts of Mexico City. The island we're sitting on is a chinampa, a man-made floating garden engineered by the Aztecs centuries ago. Dope. I'm sure they'd be thrilled with uh, what it's become. Yeah, you think this is what they had in mind? Oh yeah, no. definitely. Oh, monkey. Oh, okay. Monkey? No, I thought I, I thought I got bitten the ass cheeks by a spider. There's a lot of spiders here. Oh, they're huge. Julian lived on this island in isolation, and the story goes that he discovered the body of a young girl off the shore of the island. I'm sorry to stop the video, bro, but the spiders here in Japan, bro, they get big enough that you can claim all your taxes, bro. Julian was reportedly overcome with grief due to the fact that he could not save this little girl. Legend has it that shortly after her body emerged, a doll appeared where her body was. I don't even know how deep this water is. It's about to get grabbed. Like if someone were to drown in this, I feel like it looks like it's shallow, but I guess it's deceiving. Wow, this mm. place is creepy. Yep. I don't like the music. Something's about to happen. Oh, look, a teddy bear. <laughs> it's finally something a little oh, fuck bit a more. Spider. <laughs> Julian thought the doll probably belonged to the girl, and he hung it up on a tree on the island. His reasons for doing this vary depending on who is telling the story. Some believe he did this to honor the little girl's spirit. Mm -hmm. Others believe he did this to appease the spirit and protect himself and the island. Another variation is that Julian hung the doll to protect the girl's spirit from demons in the afterlife. Whatever the reason mm -hmm. is, the girl's existence has never been officially confirmed. Okay, wait, the dead girl was The dead girl was not confirmed. Well, what happened to her body? I don't know. This is a long time ago. What did he do with it? I don't know, we're in the canals of Mexico. This is like, I don't know how things work. Is that how things I mean, work? It was the 1950s. Probably oh. spiders hate her. <laughs> <laughs> However, Julian didn't stop at one doll. Instead, he began to amass perhaps the creepiest collection in the history of collections. Perhaps he felt the more dolls he hung up, the more protected he would be from the spirit. He'd get along well yeah. with old Sarah Winchester. One could say no. that. He mm -hmm. has a lifelong mission to appease the ghosts. I mm -hmm. think it's more a protection thing. He just okay. doesn't yeah. want right. to die. He 100%. is wearing a Kevlar vest. <laughs> <in that case. laughs> he would hunt for the lost dolls from the canals and trash near the island, stringing them up in whatever dilapidated condition he found them. And as his island grew, so did the island's reputation, drawing new visitors that would trade dolls for produce grown on the island, consequently creating an extraordinarily bizarre barter system. He probably fucks the dolls, can I say that? Oh, <laughs> I thought you would have like some respect for this place, but... <laughs> nope, went in straight with the he fucks the dolls. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Pepe on this. This yeah. is getting way off track. Sorry, okay. The Yo, Pepe a little freak, bro. He talking about some maybe he getting down with the dolls? What are you gonna put it in? What? Like on the island, like that one dude that be on TikTok, he was like, bring me that doll. But sir, bring me that doll. The compulsion to collect and hang these dolls was so extreme that those close to him believed he was driven by an unseen force that changed him forever. A force that many believe was the spirit of the young girl, haunting or perhaps possessing him to hang the dolls for 50 straight years in isolation on this island. Years. Though he initially seemed to hang the dolls out of respect and a desire for protection, close friends claim that Julian eventually began to believe the dolls were possessed. Anytime I get even remotely spooked, I just look to the monkey with the sunglasses. <laughs> Let's get a great crazy. shot of that thing. <laughs> Those 50 years bring us to 2001 when the collecting of dolls came to an abrupt end. Julian's nephew, Anastasio, came to the island to help Julian plant pumpkins. According to Anastasio, he left to work on the garden, and when he returned, he discovered the body of his uncle floating in the canal. What's notably chilling is the fact that Julian's body was found drowned in the same spot the girl was found. This is where it went down. This is where he drowned right here. He stopped collecting. Cool, 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 cool. Anastasio, who moved to the island after Julian's death, claims the dolls, quote, move their heads and whisper to each other, end quote. They've got dolls that piss themselves. I mean, do you think these dolls look like they have remotely any kind of technological yeah. capability? There, there was a Mickey Mouse over there with a little pull string. Did it work? I don't know, I didn't touch it. I felt like you touched it. Hi, kids. I didn't touch it. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> who do you think haunts this island? 
Eh, ¿quién, ¿Quién cree usted que esté como en la isla? Pues la muchacha que se ahoga en 1950 porque en las noches se escuchan voces de mujer. Y mi tío mm -hmm. cuando estaba en vida caminaba con sus tenis y su bastoncito, ahora se escucha igual. Is that a bed? Is that a guy? Is that where he sleeps at? He Wait, said he what? sleeps on a bed. Should we poke it with a stick? Bro, don't you poke say? it. You poke it with a stick. Bro, don't chain. Well, there's no one there. Oh. Is this a dream come true for you, Ryan? Jesus. Uh, I can't say that. Don Julian Santana Barrera was 80 at the time of his death. Some people think that the dolls or the spirits that inhabit them might have killed Julian. Uh, but why? <laughs> if that's what it's gonna take to get us out of here, then yes, <laughs> I believe in all of this. Put it on Wikipedia and let's leave. But to finish this off. See, now Shane's getting scared, bro. That's what I like to see. Once Shane wanted ready to leave, bro, you know it's time to go. Off, let's visit the area that has the most hidden activity on the island. It's a shrine that Julian built inside a shed for his favorite doll, including the original doll that Julian found all those years ago. Which one this was it? This is the shed where he kept his shrine. And there's candles inside, great. Mm -mm. I did so, bring a little doll of my own. Is it white candles? These are his favorite ones? I this wonder seems why. like a good spot to leave it, right? Or should I put it in the lap of the original? No. This is a fucking nightmare. I wouldn't oh, leave nothing. Man. There's the original right here. Where, what? where, where? The one that looks. Oh, the fuck? What the fuck was that? <laughs> Holy shit. Balls. <laughs> I was just about to put the offering on the original doll and then... Holy shit, look at the spider coming out of it. Oh my god. Oh fuck. Yeah, these are fucking huge. Let's go. This yeah. is also his favorite doll right here. Okay, I don't care what his favorite oh. <laughs> Fuck that. Let's go. <laughs> Scared the shit out of me. Oh my god, just look at right him. There. Look at the teeth on that thing. Oh fuck me, there are spiders everywhere. I'm gonna go under. <laughs> okay, oh okay. My we've had our fun. We are leaving this island. We're Pepe. I'm over here. Ah, fuck. Spiders. No, this is the island oh of spiders, not the dolls. Oh, they're over here. Mm-mm-mm. Just run into one, imagine. Ah, Jesus Christ. Then you just run into possessed dolls? <laughs> Toodaloo, Julian. Can't say it was pleasurable. Oh, man. I'm like, ooh, I'm itching. Oh, my God. I need to wash my eyeballs out, bro. Bro, that jump scare. I jumped so hard that I start seeing, like, little beads of light, bro. Like, almost shut down. Jesus. That's, like, my fourth one. I don't think I could take too many more. Them spiders, bro. You better check yourselves. Oh, man. Check the equipment. In the end, Julian was remembered as a nice and welcoming man. But the mystery of his eventual death remains. Was it the result of his own compulsive behavior? Ooh. Or was it the result of the spirit that he claimed haunted him for the last 50 plus years of his life? For now, and perhaps forever, the case remains unsolved. Hell yes, it's super I like unsolved. spiders. I think spiders are good. I think they're a great little insect or arachnid. Uh, but f fuck everything about that place. <laughs> I would love to bring Father Thomas to this island. He wouldn't even come. I don't think Father Thomas would be that down. Mm -hmm. I don't think he would. What makes you think that? Oh, because I don't know if you could uh, exercise spiders away. Yeah, yeah imagine the Lorona comes out and it claps them when they come back down the river, bro. Yeah, on the way to Kansas. It's going to be our showdown with the demon to end the trip. We've defeated the spiders. Killed all the we spiders. That whole that spider was like, we survived like the spirits of Winchester. Up? I got my holy water ready. I'm ready for this show, Dad. I don't think you are, frankly. Right now, we're on our way to a house widely considered to be infested with a demon that tortured a young family. The grand finale. We're going to the Selly house. Ooh! Selly. Selly, Selly. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe button. Support your boy, man. Right around the corner from 3,000. Everyone thinks feeling energy is bullshit, but you don't feel strange at all? Oh, I smell strange. Bit. No, not really. Oh shit, what up? I'm taking a selfie with some demons, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, what? It's sad. <laughs> I don't think that I'm gonna snap that. <laughs> What's my... You're insufferable. I'm just working myself up here, you know. I'm sure. Are you alright, man? <laughs> get in there. Yeah, I know. I'm just gonna get the fucking holy water. Okay. <laughs> okay. Joke on how you want. And don't ask me for some later. I won't. Now you're bringing the holy water? The creek. All they need is some WD-40. Mm, that will... Oh, no, bro. I don't like that door. That's just sure. right there in the middle, bro. You're really selling it, huh? It's a door it's in front baby. of a door. 
Man, this is nice. You know what a place like this would cost in Los Angeles? It's an arm and a leg. Yeah, I'm about to say that. Let's just tell the story of this house. How about that? Ryan, don't look over here. There's a little stuffed animal. Don't wanna. <laughs> right now, we're sitting in the living room of the Sally house. Our sleeping bags are right there because we foolishly plan on sleeping here for some stupid reason. I've lived my life by one adage, and that's don't fuck with demons. It's an adventure. Mm -hmm. I just love seeing you squirm. Let's just get into okay, why this tell, house is. Tell your is. spooky story. Located at 508 North 2nd Street in Atchison, Kansas, the Sally House is the ultimate haunted house and widely considered to be one of the most haunted places in America. Built between 1867 and 1871, this house has had three deaths inside its walls. Michael Finney in 1872, William True in 1918, and Agnes True in 1939. That's way too many, but while bro. the deaths have perhaps added to the house's ghostly inhabitants, the real evil comes from something much different. All right, I think he's here. If somebody died in your house, bro, their name is Henry, Helga, Agatha, Agnes, M M Meredith, bro, just get out of there, bro, just leave, bro, them old ass names, bro, if somebody died in their house and their name is that, bro, just leave, the house is haunted, bro, 100%, bro, them old ass names like, um, Marianne or, or, you know, Tabitha, just, just, just old, old, old names, bro, you know what I'm talking about, bro. So we call the paranormal investigator over old names. Hey. How's it going, man? Ryan. Eric Ensbrenner. Shane. Nice to meet you. I think this is all bullshit. It's <laughs> half of it is. I brought a little bit. I'm not gonna communicate with shit. I would do nothing to invite them into any kind of conversation. We are. Like, You're uh, already yeah. doing I'll be, the I'll be standing in the background. Like While Mary multiple Joe. residents of the Sally House have experienced paranormal activity, it wasn't until the 1990s when Deborah and Tony Pickman moved in that the activity was fully realized. What follows is based on their first-hand account of what started as a small haunting and later developed into a living nightmare. Deborah and Tony Pickman moved in on December 31st, 1992. The haunting started small. Lights in their house would dim. Their dog would bark incessantly at the entrance to the nursery, and their newborn baby would wake up every hour, quote, as if someone was playing with him. Mm -hmm. The Pickman's neighbor could see the nursery window from her house and eventually asked Deborah why she kept the light on in the nursery all night long with the baby sleeping in there. This question came as an icy shock to Deborah, who always turned the light off. Oh. <laughs> That's why my kids sleep in my room, bro. It's a little weird, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Anyways. Things got especially weird on July 14th, 1993, when Deborah, Tony, and her sister Karen discovered all the stuffed animals in the nursery organized into a neat circle back to back in the middle of the room on the floor. The three of them figured it was one of them playing a practical joke, so they put the animals back, turned off the light, and went downstairs. To their horror, when they returned, not only was the light on, but a bear was knocked off its chair and laying on its back on the ground. <laughs> We better get out of this house. Somebody knocked our little bear out of his little wicker you're chair. Telling, you're telling me you wouldn't be uh, unnerved by going upstairs and seeing a bunch of stuffed animals organized into a little cult circle yeah. when no one did it? So who did, um, I don't know. After that, like anybody would, they packed up some stuff, took their baby, and left the house to stay with Tony's parents. Did they bring the bear? I don't believe they brought the bear. I mean, there's, I can't imagine they would bring the bear. While they were leaving the house, Tony felt a sharp sting in his back. When they lifted up his shirt, they discovered three long scratches. Oh, hell no. Tony would continue to get viciously scratched as time went on. Get out and of in here, one Tony. instance, a scratch manifested while on video. The Pikmins eventually returned to a psychic who picked up on a presence named Sally. Sally, if you're here, or any spirit that's here, let's communicate. No. Here's a flashlight. If you can turn the flashlight Jeez. on, let us know you're here. That'd be great. Bro, Sally, don't do it. Don't do it, Sally. Yeah, please do. Don't do it. Don't do it. Please don't do it. It's a little it. monkey. <laughs> we saw one of those on the island of the haunted dolls. According to Deborah Pickman, on the morning of October 31st, 1993, Tony went to grab a glass of orange juice in the kitchen. When he turned around, he saw a little girl in early 1900s clothing. Shortly after, he sketched what he saw for Deborah. All right, we are in the kitchen. Please turn the light on for us. Please don't. Please she don't. probably wanted some Demon. juice too. Stop calling it that. Demon. Stop it. Stop talking to it. No, I just want to talk to the demons. We met a pal named Father Thomas. Oh, he, he told us not to talk to you, but oh. I think you guys are swell. Do Father I do Thomas nothing to invite them to somehow show themselves or taunt them in any way. If you like the guy staying here, turn the light on. You're fucking crazy, Shane. If you don't like us, turn it on. Please don't turn it on. <laughs> 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 
I'm out, bro. <laughs> Hell no, nah, bro. Oh shit. I'm out. No! <laughs> oh, holy bro, I hate Shane right holy now. Holy water. Oh, I hate him. If oh. you actually don't like us, please just turn it on. I don't think I don't think they have the power to turn it back on again, frankly. I really think they don't. Ryan. <laughs> 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 Bruh. Are you fucking kidding me? No. The- Keep in mind, nah, we have to spend the night bro. here. <laughs> Please turn the light off for us, spirits. Don't you fucking do it. Turn it all the way off. Don't, don't, don't. Thank you. Oh, oh fuck, no, no, oh my God. Bro, I'm Please not drop. sleeping here. Oh, man, oh, I couldn't God. sleep. I'm not sleeping here, You should never talk to it, dude. Mm-mm-mm. That's mm-mm. a car going mm-mm. by, it's okay. Ah, no, sleep that's the rain, fucking bro. flashlight rolling in the background. Hell, come oh, yeah, no. Oh. oh, my goodness. Oh, my lord. It's a flashlight, it rolls, it's cylindrical. But it shouldn't roll back oh, and forth like that. Oh, chills. You should have never talked to it, dude. What is wrong with you? In what may be a curious coincidence, a former resident who lived in the house shortly before the Pikmin said, quote, my daughter was five at the time. She had an imaginary friend, Sally. I would scold her for something and she would come back and tell me, I didn't do that, Sally did it. Or Sally told me to do it. When shown Mm -hmm. Tony Pikmin's drawing 11 years after they moved out of the house, the daughter identified it as her imaginary friend from her childhood. Do not be afraid, do not be afraid, do not be afraid, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. Hey, just take a a sit down, it's fine. Okay, don't hurt your... Oh, fuck, okay, Mm -hmm. I'm sure, we don't know how to explain that. Maybe it's just, you know, flashlights are funny like that. The Pikmin's also reported fires that would start on their own. In fact, two former residents before the Pikmin's reported fires starting inexplicably in the room that would eventually become the Pikmin's nursery. The activity continued to escalate beyond fires, however. A lamp was thrown at Tony's mother. Tony reported Damn. hearing scratching behind his bed. Quote, almost like you had an animal digging to get out of the wall, end quote. And in one instance, Sally appeared in the room and grabbed Tony's wrist, burning dark red finger marks into his arm. At this point, Tony believed, quote, we're dealing with something way beyond a little girl, end quote, and begged to leave the house. Yet Deborah, who at this point never witnessed anything alarming, didn't share the same desire. This was the 90s. People had, like, video recorders, you know. I mean, the scratches all happen on camera, but here's the thing. This is what I fucking love about, like, paranormal evidence. Yeah. People are always clamoring for it, right? Like, where's the evidence? And then when the evidence finally is there, it's like, Nah, that's not fake. real. Yep. Things eventually went beyond physical terror, however. Mm-hmm. Here's another quote from Tony. Quote, it got to the point where I, when I was in the house, I could not think any happy thought. It was just strictly I wanted to hurt her. I, I was a whole different person. That something could come inside me and make me capable of doing that, I just, it tears me up. As much as I hate to say it, I'd planned on slitting her throat. Jesus Christ! If you slit my throat tonight, I'm gonna have a hard time forgiving you for that. Will you haunt me for the rest of my life? No, because I'll be dead. Ghosts aren't real. Oh, okay. Fair enough. In 1994, the Pikmins finally moved out of the house. But at this point, you're probably wondering who is Sally. From what I could find, records show that a Sally Isabel Hall did indeed live in the house in 1905, but she was actually a 34-year-old black woman. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> what? Hear me out, hear me out here. Okay. okay. While this may seem damning at first, <laughs> the implications of this are actually quite horrifying. If there was, in fact, never a girl named Sally who lived here, then who or what was this alleged spirit presenting itself as a little girl named Sally? That question led me to this piece of research. Sometimes, inhuman presences or demons will allegedly present themselves as humans that are physically flawed. Or in some cases, perhaps like this one, they may appear as children. It's an old black lady haunting people, bruh. It's probably Aunt Jemima from the syrup box. I don't know why she took the form of that. That's crazy. A 30-year-old black woman died up in that house, huh? Yeah, that's crazy, bruh. Yeah, that's probably Aunt Jemima. Or it might be Uncle Ben's men rights. Who knows? That demon's racist. He was like, oh, there was a, a black lady who lived here? <laughs> Wait a minute. No, I can't haunt with that. Well, demons- What about a little, little white girl? <laughs> A little blonde one. I'll give her pigtails. Demons don't. Fuck that demon. He's whitewashing the history of this house. He's exactly what's wrong with Hollywood. Demons don't present themselves as a ghost. That's what I was saying. They present themselves as a ghost. Ever? 
No. This an entity, like an entity that's not human, it needs energy. It needs souls to feed off of. So if mm. you need that, you wouldn't immediately come out with the horns. You come out with the little girl. That makes sense to me. Whatever. Uh, Demon's racist. Yeah. I don't respect this demon. I guess but what true. really suggests the presence of a demon is something that occurred in the basement well after the Pikmins left the house. The basement. A female tenant, her husband, and their children moved into the house and reported no paranormal activity. But on a surprise visit from landlord Les Smith, he allegedly discovered something terrifying in the basement. A large pentagram on the floor, an altar, a large black kettle, and a black robe. No a pointy hat, a broomstick, hey man. three newts, <laughs> a <laughs> lizard tongue, eyeballs. That's it's what he found. Many <laughs> believe that this female tenant was a Satan worshiper performing <laughs> sacrificial rituals. To this day, there's a black mark on the floor where the alleged rituals took place. Consequently, many believe the demon lives in this basement, mm -hmm. specifically in the hole in the back wall. Which brings me back to something Father Thomas told us about demons. I was reading about something called infestation, mm -hmm. where like, a demon will just take hold of a house. So if that family was involved in a satanic cult, and they were um, doing other kinds of rituals and spells that are part of the cult, it would not at all surprise me if there was something demonic still See? attached, because that's where that cult basically had a home. And it opened the portal there. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like the devil made me do it. If you haven't seen that movie, bro, go watch it. So if you're there in the hole, you must speak to us or communicate with us. Turn that flashlight on. Please don't. Please don't. Please yeah, don't. Yeah, don't do That's it. That's me. Sorry. Oh, thank God. <laughs> so we're giving off high MF here because of this. Whoa. Oh, that thing. So that's a false read. But since there's a lot of electricity coming through the hair, that's saying they can feed a spirit. Oh, that's good. Let's feed it more. Why not, right? He's hungry. If you want to eat my heart, turn that light on. I think this demon's a oh, wimp. He's lost his mind. That's good. You're gonna lay on the pentagram. Here we oh, go. Oh my yeah, lord. Mind. Rock and roll, buckaroo. If you want to eat my heart, turn that light on. If you want to eat Ryan's heart, don't, don't turn stop that light putting on. me in your shit. Our old pal Ryan Bergara. Stop. We're a package deal. <laughs> he gave his last name. Oh, the lights on, Ryan. Look at the lights. <laughs> Demon, we got him. Jesus Christ. Turn off for us, please. For Ryan's sake. Ah! No! <laughs> no! Fuck this house, dude. <laughs> Fuck this house so hard. Well, now we can nah, spend it. Nah, Here's a fun fact about sleeping here. One past resident described waking up to a, quote, grotesque and gaunt, dead-looking individual not only laying next to her, but staring at her. Oh! And Here's the thing, I discount almost 100% of I saw it in the middle of the night things because sleep paralysis, oftentimes most people wake up and see shit. If I wake up- Bro, I slept, I woke up and I see shit, bro. If I were to wake up and I saw somebody staring at me, bro, it would've went just like this. I would've looked, I would've like. Dead, bro. Like I'm gone, bro. Like there's nothing that you can fix with that. Like I'm, I'm dying, bro. Right then and there. Like I'm, I'm dead. Night, and there's this grotesque-looking thing laying next to me and just staring at me with its fucking stupid beady eyes open. I I'm gonna shit myself. <laughs> there's gonna be poo in this. <laughs> and I'm just gonna carry out the sleep. You're just gonna roll it up. Put it in the garbage can. Put it in the garbage can. My big fucking poo burrito, and that's that's. <laughs> I'm never coming back. I'll leave all the shit. I'm fucking never coming back. Hell, bro, this is the part y'all would've lost me, bro. I'm not sleeping, that we're in, sleeping that in this house after what we saw is astounding. I'm proud of you, Ryan. Time to sleep. Lights out, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'm sleeping inside the sleeping bag, bro. So we're gonna sleep here all night. Uh, it's gonna be dreadfully quiet. You know, it's weird thinking what's directly below us is that basement. Why would you say that? I'm <laughs> right close under. to you. I don't care. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Hey, no every little like, pin uh, drop that you hear, every little creak, it's gonna make your butthole tighten. Do not be afraid, do not be afraid. I thought I saw something move out of the corner of my eye. Oh. I will stay in this house till 5 a.m. If I sleep, I sleep. If I don't, I don't. I think it would be a sleep full night for me if it weren't for you. Oh, the light went out outside. Did you turn Does, that out? No. Yeah, you did. I didn't, no. No, oh, weird. Yeah, that's me. Okay. Nope, I'm man enough to admit this is not this is not happening tonight. Mm -hmm. I can't. It's not happening. Ever. It's not happening ever. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. man. Look, it's okay. It's not happening. I think I just blacked out. <laughs> you giving up? <laughs> Don't say it like that. Well, I mean that's what's happening. Yeah. Here's what here's what I'll do. The witching hour is at three, right? Why is it three? 
That's to mock the Holy Trinity. Yeah. Sometimes you'll hear three knocks. That's a demon. When it hits three o'clock, uh -huh. I will be quiet for three minutes. No, you won't. I will. Can you give me time updates, like one minute, two minutes? Yeah. Three, two, one. Bro, but when it gets quiet, you start hearing shit. Okay, I'll be quiet for you guys too. That's a minute. That's another minute. Bruh, stop! Why do you gotta do the sound effects? Oh, thank you, Jesus Christ. Were you freaking out? Yeah. The wave of relief that just is over, just sweeping over my body right now. Oh, there's a part of me right now that feels foolish for getting up, but. You should feel foolish. Are you trying to convince me to stay in here? <sighs> well, no, I just think it's silly to just give up at the last minute, but whatever, you know, it's no big deal. Yeah, I give up. I want to give up. You've made up your mind, you're done. You don't have it in you. <laughs> Stop saying that, you're making me no, want to do it. I'm just saying, you don't have it in you, it's fine. <laughs> So, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. You're right, I don't have it in me. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's go. All right, fuck you. I hope you fucking looking at this now, motherfucker. Did you just call the demon a motherfucker? No, I don't give a shit now. I'm gone. <laughs> I got my laptop, I got my holy water, I got the card that I need here. Don't leave Peace nothing. out, bitch. Not even this, a single part of me feels bad about leaving. <laughs> go fuck yourself, Sally House. You were truly awful, and I hate you. This is the happiest moment of my life. Yeah. I don't think it'd be the most embarrassing, but... Nope, it's, I'm pretty happy. There's the house. Cool, fuck that house. Goodbye. In the end, it's up for debate on what haunts the Sally house. The Pikmin seem to believe it's a demon. And in my opinion, nothing I experience suggests otherwise. But as always, the answer will remain unsolved. You know, the first two occasions, I wasn't sure. My confidence was starting to waver, even at the last place, till like about halfway through. But when that flashlight turned on, I think that's a proof positive. Ghosts and or demons are real. There's no other explanation for it. No, I just think it was a, a wonderful coincidence. And I'm glad it happened because we got to see you uh, turn into a babbling mess. Coincidence five times in a row? He screwed the flashlight to right in between the on and off. Even if it's on the edge, like the very edge, it still needs just a little bit of a push. <laughs> no, it doesn't. And you know who gave it that push? Casper the Friendly Ghost? Perhaps. <laughs> Look, I'm happy to let you believe in this, because I think it's fun that you believe in it, because if we go to more places, it's going to be fun to watch you freak out some more. So, great. We're never going to agree. Are demons and ghosts real? Can they influence people? Let's just call it unsolved. How about that? No, but we sure had fun. All right. Let's get out of here. Finish my beer, actually. <laughs> All right, so with that being said, if he say he screwed it, why didn't you say anything? You know what I'm saying? If you see him kind of like tampering with it, because it may or may not go off, you just went over there, screwed it tighter to see if it cut on. So then if it did cut on, you could be like, all right, you know what? Now I feel like maybe it's the possibility that ghosts may be real or maybe somebody turned on the flashlight. Uh, let me know down in the comment section what you thought was the scariest. For me, it had to be the Sally house. At first, it was kind of like the dolls and that little bit longer, it kind of got to the Sally house. The one that was kind of just like weird to me, more than creepy, it was just the first lady, the Winchester's house. Uh, that place was just scary. It looked like something Picasso made or something in his sleep. It looked like it was just weird. It was just like a lot of stuff that didn't make any sense. I felt like she had schizophrenia. But this video is by BuzzFeed on Salsa. If you guys haven't already, be sure you swoop down the description box. Call on a link and watch the videos in entirety because I was pausing and stopping and talking through the whole thing. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is President Sims, and welcome to the Crow's Desk. But again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.